Should schools use Wi-Fi? What alternatives? We recommend that schools use wired, not Wi-Fi, to connect children to the internet and for all the networks in schools, because school is a unique environment. So you have, you know, in any classroom, you might have 30 kids who all have a wireless laptop. And then they might also have a wireless cell phone in their pocket. A lot of them will rest it directly on their abdomen or over their reproductive parts because they're texting during class. There might be smart watches and all kinds of smart wearable things on their body. All of this is creating a electromagnetic frequencies in the room that, that are pretty unique because it's so dense. There are just so many devices. And school is a time when kids should be in as healthy environment as possible. They're there for many hours a day. We absolutely can hardwire those devices. I know it's a bit challenging, but it can be done, especially in new builds. There are many countries where they have taken Wi-Fi out of nursery school, out of elementary school, and they are coming up with creative ways to connect kids to the internet that don't involve Wi-Fi on all the time. There's some schools that have the turn it off when not in use, which we actually is a first step, but not really a complete step because it's still allowing exposures to the kids. Kids have tablets resting on their, you know, their crisscross applesauce with a tablet on their lap. And the teachers, the parents, the kids are not aware that that's radiating their, uh, their reproductive parts and their heads, which are receiving that radiation. In schools, they're also doing virtual reality where there are smartphones put into these devices right up to their eyes. Children's eyes are very vulnerable to radio frequency and, and non-ionizing radiation. And that, that's where their eyes can receive some of the highest levels of exposure. Plus there's the blue light. There's been uh, imaging that uh, environmental health trust scientists have done looking at virtual reality, smartphones in virtual reality positions and have found uh, the areas of the brain and the eyes to receive some of the highest intensities far more than an adult with the same device in front of their face. So we really recommend wired solutions. Plus on top of that, on top of the wireless radiation, the studies that have been done on using technology in the classroom have not found that just pouring it all on, tech, 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 that that is going to promote uh, the educational goals that all the teachers and the parents want, that actually too much technology without adequate training, which is what is happening in our schools in the United States, is resulting in a poor outcome. In fact, I get, we get contacted all the time um, locally by parents who say, I know you're working on the tech issue. You know, all this, my kids are doing accessing porn in class. They're playing these games. How do we get the kids off the games? It's not, all of this technology is not resulting in what we want, which is kids learning about a subject. There actually is a real place for a book. We need to read books. It should not be that we're at the end of books and that kids are, they're doing this FaceTiming with each other and all this conversing through the Zoom, sort of what I'm doing right now, um, ironically, um, but they're not listening to each other. So when they're only seeing each other, they're not actually listening as well. And language is suffering. The processing of kids of information is suffering because of all this tech use. So I think we, we really need to rethink technology and education. We need to connect kids so they can get the information they need. But the overuse of technology and the unfettered, the, the lack of any safety provisions for how we're using technology in class, that needs to be addressed. I know teachers come up to me and they say, uh, Theodora, let me tell you what our problem is. Our problem is all the kids have cell phones and they're recording me. All the time I'm being recorded, it's being put on social media. And I, and, and I, you know, I as a teacher, am unable to, to teach properly because of this that is happening. So we recommend cell phones should be off and away. And I mean, turned off, powered off uh, for classrooms, in classrooms. 
just like they're doing in China, where they've actually prohibited cell phones in elementary uh, and middle schools and in many countries. How do we stop a 5G tower from being built near our house? So in order to stop a 5G tower from being built in front of your house, the first thing I would say is you have to act quick and intensely. Once a tower goes up, it is very hard to get it down. It, nearly impossible, actually. So the first thing is to find out everything you can about the tower. Get the permit. Find out exactly where it is being proposed. Get the application. Educate all the people who live near you and will be affected by this tower that it's actually happening. So you want to shine the light on, the, on what is happening in your community. Get press. Write an op-ed. Contact your local paper so that people can learn more about this. Find out if the cell tower company has followed the law in your community, because I'll tell you what we found out is that when a cell tower is proposed, there are violations in the permitting process um, that have gone unnoticed because generally the, whatever group is supposed to be checking is sort of um, rubber stamping it along. And, um, Contact your elected officials. Ensure that you've been given a notice that there's a proper hearing. And uh, we have found that many people have been able to stop cell towers that are being proposed right near their homes if they can organize very e effectively and with a massive uh, outreach. Start a coalition and give yourself a name and start a blog on this issue. And really find out, like, is the tower really needed? Is there really a deficit of service in your area? Because in many instances, the cell tower is being put there for future use, not for actually a need for service. The phones have, you know, three, four bars. So there's a lot that people can do. And do go to Environmental Health Trust. We have a section on addressing cell towers. There's also 5G Crisis, which has resources and physicians for safe technology, as well as Dr. Moskowitz, uh, Safer EMR. He has a blog with many scientific resources, and he always keeps up to date on news around the country on the issue of cell towers. Mm -hmm.